Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you the key features of a Microsoft Teams meeting. So starting off, we've got across the top, there's a little timer here, which is showing us how long this particular meeting has been going on for. You can also see that this meeting is being transcribed. Now, you can actually record a meeting in two different ways. When you say that you're recording a meeting, that's recording everything. Everything everyone's saying and doing, as well as the webcams and the kind of visuals that you're showing in the meeting. However, if you don't want the visuals or the webcams to be recorded, you can also turn on the transcribe option. And it's only what people are saying is actually being transcribed. Now, this is really useful, especially if you're planning on using Copilot to follow up with like meeting actions and things like that. So let's say we can see how long the meeting has been going on for by looking at this time here. Across the, the, the top, we also have things like chat. Now chat, to be honest with you, is mostly used during a Teams meeting, um, probably nine times out of 10, when people can't hear each other and say, I can't hear you, can you hear me? And things like that. That's, that's pretty much the, the number one reason I ever see chat being used. But there's plenty of other reasons why you would want to use chat in a Teams meeting. So things like if you're in a very large meeting and you don't want to interrupt it by coming off uh, uh, mute and you just want to ask a question, then you can pop that into the chat. Um, it might be also that you're wanting to share links to documents or websites or other useful resources during a meeting saying, hey, go check this out and you plop it into the chat. Now we can format the text. If you want to bold, italic, underline, things like that. We can add in emojis, um, like sort of likes and things like that, or GIFs. So say for example, if something was um, sort of really good, we could say, oh, this is great. This is amazing, uh, terrific or just a little thumbs up or something like that, um, just to kind of show that what we think of, of what's been announced. Um, there are other kind of features down here that is worth kind of exploring. Um, so we can do things like attaching files um, or embedding things like YouTube videos or forms for like questionnaires and things like that. And we're all posting that into the chat of this particular meeting. We then have the people tab. So the people tab is basically showing us who is in the, the current meeting. We can also type in someone's name into this bar if, uh, if we wanted to invite them, or we can click on the share invite link. So we can then paste that into a uh, an email, a chat message, a text message, whatever it is that we could send to somebody say, hey, come join this meeting. We also have the raise hand feature. Now, the reason why I've left the, the kind of people tab open is you can see when you click on the raise hand um, button, not only does your kind of screen go yellow, and that's for everybody. Everyone would see the kind of the yellow line that's around your um, webcam box. And that basically shows that you've got a question. Also in the people tab, I've left this open because you can see there is a little sort of hand um, that, that's now showing up here to show that you have a question. And actually when there's multiple people in the Teams meeting, it will bump the, the person who's raised their hand for a question right at the top of that meeting. So that means as an organizer of the team's meeting, if I was looking for someone who um, was asking a question, say I pitched a question to the audience to say, um, who uh, is going to be coming to the Christmas party or something like that, raise your hand or whatever. I could look into that and then see people that are raising their hand or who's got a question, Q&A end of, uh, of a webinar or something like that, who's got questions and I can quickly say, oh, okay, Dougie was got a question. Now, once I've had my question answered and I no longer want my hand raised, I can click that button again and that will then um, lower my hand and my camera is no longer uh, having that kind of yellow ring around it as well. We can also use reactions. So say for example, if something was um, really sort of positive or we wanted to kind of show our kind of emotion, again, without coming off mute, uh, without kind of posting in text, we can use these little emotions um, uh, for reactions and that will do a couple of things. It will flash over our uh, webcam, the, the reaction that we've used, but also, especially if there's plenty of people in the meeting, um, the, the, the re reaction emojis will appear from the bottom of the screen. So that means that you can quickly see people's reactions to what's being announced. Say for example, this was a town hall type of meeting or a big conference, which we've got loads of people from our company in and we've just made a really big announcement. We've got a new feature coming or something like that. We could then see loads of love hearts and things like that um, coming up from the bottom of the screen. Um, so next uh, we have the views. Now by default, you will have a gallery view, but we do have a few other options. We have a speaker view, 
uh, which is basically just going to focus on him speaking, which is not necessarily great at the moment because it's only me that's in this particular meeting. We've got together mode. Now this puts us into kind of like a row of kind of seats, um, almost kind of like we're in a stadium or something like that. And we can choose different types of layouts depending on how many people we've got. Uh, and obviously this works much better once you've got quite a lot of people, but there you can see I'm now in a little seat. But if there was loads of people in this meeting, it would zoom out to show all the people that were in uh, that particular meeting. We have immersive spaces. Now, I actually have some dedicated videos about this, so go and check this out. But this is basically where you can use an avatar. Um, and it looks a little bit like a video game where you can move around in a virtualized space. And it's all 3D. Um, once we're inside some like together mode, we can choose to change the uh, scene or even assign people to different seats as well. We also have the ability to have breakout rooms. Now this is fantastic when you've got a, a, a large kind of meeting and maybe it's almost like, think of it almost like in a conference style where you might have a keynote to start off with for the first hour. And then the second hour is actually breakout sessions. Um, now what you can do is you can have multiple rooms to kind of have those breakout sessions in. Um, and then you can then bring everyone back together afterwards. Um, now this is also really good for things like training or workshops or things like that where you're then pairing people off into groups say okay during a training session we've got 10 people we're going to split into five groups of two and you're going to discuss uh something in in those little groups and then you can bring everyone back from those rooms into the main meeting to then discuss what they they kind of um their findings and their their, their, their kind of overarching summary Cool. Then we have Copilot. Now, this won't obviously um, be there for everybody. It will only be there if you have the Copilot license. But Copilot is fantastic um, for kind of asking questions about meeting and things like that. So you might ask say, something like, please recap this meeting so far. And it can then understand what is actually being sort of discussed in the meeting and then provide a bit of a recap. Now, this meeting um, I actually used for a previous video where I was testing um, Copilot and I actually was pretending it was a SharePoint workshop. And then this is why the key topics that have come up is related to SharePoint internet requirements, concerns and excitements, things like that. And it's done a really fantastic job of recapping what it believes is the meeting so far. We can also ask it for more things like um, saying, please list out all of the attendees of the meeting um, and it knows exactly who's in the meeting um, oh maybe it doesn't uh, <laughs> um, and we can list out exactly who's in the meeting um, and maybe like what they were sort of most excited about their concerns things like that um, which exactly is copied um, it, it's realized what it is here we've also got apps so there's loads of different third-party apps and integrations and things like that so again I would go and check those out because there might be some third-party apps um, that you're currently using, which integrate nicely into your Microsoft Teams meetings. Just an example here, we have things like Polls. So Polls is a app, it's actually a Microsoft app, um, but it integrates nicely into a Teams meeting where we can ask questions um, to the audience that's inside of that particular meeting and have a live poll um, of, of what, we're, what we're thinking. So maybe we'll just have a quick sort of um, uh, question. So it might be something like, what do you want to eat at the Christmas party? Something along those lines. And this is where we then might put in some answers. So we might say beef or turkey or the veg option. And then when we click on launch now, what that will do is it'll then post that poll into our chat, but also comes up on screen so we can then say for example i click turkey and then that that response has then been submitted into here so we can see um, that poll has been submitted and we can see all the different answers that are inside of here as well so moving on from the apps into some of the more options this is where you can choose to record your screen or the transcript so by clicking start recording what happens that will start to record the meeting and you'll see a little red light will appear here to turn it off, all you need to do is go back into here and click on stop recording and it'll stop recording. Now it'll only start recording from the point where um, you have uh, cl click start recording. It won't go back to the beginning of the meeting and start recording. It will stop recording from when either you go in and say stop recording or 
the last person who was in the Teams meeting leaves the call. So if you leave the call but someone else stays in the call, it will continue recording until that person leaves. We then have the uh, transcription. And this is what I was saying before about there's two ways of recording a meeting, either with the webcam and the visuals and things like that, or the transcription is just basically what is being said during the meeting to be documented down. And you can also click on that show transcript and that'll actually show you exactly what's been said and when uh, inside of the meeting. We've also got things like uh, meeting info. So you can see the meeting info here and you could choose to uh, copy that meeting and send it out to somebody if you wanted to. We've got video effects and settings. And this is essentially where um, we can choose to change our background. So say for example, we wanted to change our background to just like a blur, we click on um, a blur and then click on apply and then that will then change um, our kind of background. Now, I do need to come out of this view and go back into gallery view for you to see the, these changes being made um, because obviously it's not going to take effect if I'm inside of the together mode. There's loads of different backgrounds you can change it to in here. Um, there's even some like moving sort of video ones, so some like little twinkling lights and things like that. You can also upload your own or you can just turn them off completely if you wanted to. There is also different like filters you can apply over the top, even some funny little ones like uh, in the Snapchat area where you could choose to apply a cat um, on top of your head. These little funny little quirky ones. There we go. So now I've also got this little cat that's now sat on top of my head as, a, as well. Now, to be honest, all of these don't necessarily serve a massively functional purpose. They are just essentially little funny little things. But they can say, for example, you've got a little uh, afternoon plan of a kind of little get together where you can play games and things like that and have a fun little social event. Then this can basically just make that a lot more um, sort of fun. Um, so I'll just turn the cat off. There we go. Um, so those are different video effects. You can also choose to create an avatar. Now you can use your avatar inside of a Teams meeting. Um, so if I just click on myself and then click on apply avatar, you can then change your kind of webcam to be that avatar. And as you're kind of talking and moving and things like that, the, the, the avatar will also be animated during that period of time as well. Now I'm just gonna try, see if I can turn my microphone on without it interfering with the recording. And then you can see as I'm talking, my avatar will be talking at the same time as me as well. You can also use it for reacting, so waving and things like that. Um, or we could just choose to sort of turn um, off our avatar. Um, so go back to video effects and we can go back to turning on our video. There we go. So um, that's our video effects. Um, we also have some audio settings. Now this is where you'd wanna come in and you would change, say for example, if someone said, I can hear you, but you can't hear me or vice versa. It's usually because the audio settings aren't quite right. So again, by clicking on more and going to the audio settings, this is where you can choose which speaker. So I've got um, a couple of different speakers plugged in, but these are the speakers that I want my audio to come out from. I've also got different microphones as well um, that I'm using. Now, as I say, I've muted myself so that actually it's not conflicting with the recording of this video, but I would hope that if I was in an actual meeting, if I was unmuted, I would see that as I'm talking, my microphone would actually um, be showing colors here to show that actually it is working. We also have some advanced settings as well. Um, so I'm not gonna cover all these because I have covered these in a, in a recent kind of video as well. But the main one is about noise suppression. So just making sure that you actually have um, at least the background noise only enabled so that people don't hear all the kind of things happening in the background. So if you're working from home and you've got dogs barking or um, you're working somewhere that's got construction, there's hammers and drills and things like that, you can have that noise suppression on to make sure that people can hear you clearly inside of the meeting as well. We also have some language and speech settings, so we can also choose to show the live captions. And this is essentially, as I'm kind of talking, it's going to show up on screen what I'm saying. Now, this is really useful for um, people to stay engaged in a Microsoft Teams meeting, especially if they've got um, a hearing disability, for example, um, they can follow along with the meeting as the meeting is going on. 
There's also a bunch of different settings, so um, I'll go and explore these as well. Uh, but I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail with these. But essentially, these are kind of some of the other kind of settings and configurations that you've got available to you. You can turn your camera on and off using this um, button across the top. And it also allows you to jump into some of the backgrounds and things like that that you've previously set. Um, you can also set sort of things like soft focus. Um, so if you wanted to sort of make this um, a bit more sort of soft or a bit more kind of harsh, you can choose to change these kind of almost like lighting features as well. Um, then also with the microphone, so you can turn that on and off. And also by clicking this little drop down here, that will also give you the, the, the core settings that you need access to for your microphone. We then have the ability to share screen. So by clicking on share screen, um, we can see there's a couple of different options here. So we've got things like um, the different presenter modes, if you want to stand out, if whether they'll be side by side. So I could maybe say I want to be stand out, which means I'm going to be cut out as a webcam uh, across the bottom, or you have a couple of different options in here. We can then choose whether we're going to share our screen or something that I've also covered recently is how you can choose to share your kind of PowerPoints and things like that directly as well. So um, I use Copilot to mock up a, a fake example of why you should be fearful of honey badgers. So if you've not watched that video, go and check that out as well. Um, but essentially, yeah, once you share your screen, um, you can have it. And if I, I choose, actually, I'm going to share uh, this particular screen by clicking on the tab here. And that's just going to share my screen. Um, and then for other people, um, I, will, I will actually be cut out across the bottom corner. I didn't work very well because it, it's jumped onto a different screen that I was recording on. But you could always stop the recording by clicking the, the stop recording across the top as well. And of course, at the end of the meeting, you can always choose to click on leave um, or end meeting as well, which end meeting will end it for everybody and remove them. And once it's then complete, any recordings and things like that will be available inside of Microsoft Teams um for you to, to access if you're using copilot or teams premium there's also the ability to summarize the actions and the minutes that came from that team's meeting as well